Guten Abend miteinander und recht herzlich willkommen zu unserer heutigen Sendung Jazz in Concert. Die heutige Folge steht unter dem Motto Traditional Jazz from Louis Armstrong to Eddie Canton. Die Aufzeichnungen entstanden 1984 und 1986 am Jazz Festival Bern. Hans Turbrück, Sie sind der Verantwortliche dieses Festivals und Sie haben ja auch eine ganz spezielle Beziehung zu diesen Musikern. Ja, die erste Gruppe besteht ausnahmslos aus Jazzmusikern, die eine langjährige Freundschaft gepflegt haben mit dem legendären Gitarristen Eddie Condon. Eddie Condon, wie Sie wissen, ist ein, eine markante Figur in der ganzen Geschichte des Chicago Jazz, speziell in den 30er, 40er und 50er Jahren. Und in der Gruppe, die Sie jetzt dann sehen werden, steht an der Spitze der mittlerweile über 80-jährige Trompeter Wild Bill Davison. Seine Freunde, die er speziell eingeladen hat für diesen Abend, waren Bob Wilber als Saxophonist, Sopransaxophon und Kleinette. Dann ein Mann aus Florida, der praktisch von ihm entdeckt wurde und erstmals nach Europa gebracht wurde vor einigen Jahren, der Posaunist Bill Allred. Dann der Pianist aus New York, Dick Wellstud. Und dann quasi in der Funktion von Eddie Condon, der Gitarrist Bucky Pizzarelli. Dann am Bass, nicht speziell zu erwähnen, der auch bereits legendäre Bassist Milt Hinton und am Schlagzeug aus Los Angeles der Jake Hanna. Thank you. 
Wild Bill Davison, you have been and still are one of the most influential and known cornet player, and you have been together with Eddie Condon, the man in the 30s in the Chicago era for the Chicago style jazz. Now, what I th would like to know, during this era, there was another man having a lot of influence who unfortunately had nothing to do at all with music, Al Capone. Did he really have an influence on the music scene in those years? Well, if you work in Chicago, you had to work for Al Capone because he owned all the clubs. And uh, he, the, the bands were very important to him. All the big clubs with floor shows were Al Capone's clubs. Is, wasn't that very dangerous to work for Al Capone? I mean, you were a cornetist. I mean, you can't hide behind the bass or... A <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I've seen, seen things happen uh, that I wouldn't want to have been a part of, but uh, he didn't... Uh, no one ever got hurt in the way of the musicians that I know of because he was selling music. He wasn't going to hurt the people that were doing good for him. I think you even met him personally once. Yes, I, I met him. A, a, a head waiter came to me one night and said, uh, there's a man wants to talk to you up in the balcony. So I went up there and he said, uh, hello, kid. He said, sit down. <coughs> and he said, uh, I like the way you play and I like the way the band is playing. And he said, I want you to take this money down and divide it up with the music guys. And he put some money in my pocket here, and I went downstairs and I said to the head waiter, who the, who the devil was that man that you... He said, that's Al Capone. Of course, I don't know if you would known that, but... <laughs> when you think back to that time working in Chicago, did you ever find the same uh, surroundings, the same atmosphere anywhere else in, in the United States as, as during that time in Chicago? No. Uh, that was the jazz capital of the world, probably, at that time. Uh, uh, there was... The Union uh, claimed that they had a thousand jazz bands working in the city limits of Chicago. Now, that's a lot of jazz bands. I think we're all glad that those times from a point of view of Mr. Capone are over, and we are still glad that there are people who still play the music of those of that era. And yes, I did a, a command performance for Al Capone once when I was in the theaters. I was playing with a big stage orchestra, and uh, we, we were, uh, as the picture, the movie of the week that I was there was uh, Hell's Angels, and that was Gene Harlow and uh, Ben Lyon were the stars, and they are, were appearing with our band. And we got the word in the afternoon that we were going to play for Al Capone that night. And uh, they sent the big black sedans around to pick us up. Of course, everybody went, too. To, uh, <laughs> you couldn't very well no, refuse. You didn't, so you couldn't refuse that one. And we went to that very hotel that they're talking about now, uh, finding the vault underneath and all this stuff that... Uh